Hello everyone, Dragonfly here, back in the DCS World Mission Editor to build a CAS mission to defend a, an oil refinery uh, near a Pody on the Caucasus map. This is a mission that I've flown a couple times, uh, done a fly through of, and uh, now I'm just going to show you how I built it. It's going to be kind of an advanced mission, uh, the, the timing and, uh, and uh, how the events happen. It's uh, kind of kind of choreographed, so I'll, I'll explain all that. Um, and actually, I'll explain it right now. Is let's look at the uh, mission brief, and where we're looking at is under the blue task here. Uh, this was all typed in uh, previously. I'm just going to summarize. Uh, basically, a Russian force, these tanks, and these mortars here are uh, planning on attacking uh, this oil refinery here just south of the river at Pody. Um, we've inserted some special forces in there to try to defend against the armor, but uh, it's they're just going to be a speed bump, basically. Uh, there's not enough of them to actually defend against uh, the armor. So we also have a striker force down here of about five uh, uh, tow uh, strikers and tow uh, Humvees that are going to be moving forward into a uh, firing position up in this field uh, in case the red armor crosses the bridge. Um, right now, though, uh, they're pinned down by mortar fire uh, artillery. And so uh, in the mission, we'll have to destroy the mortars first. And once those mortars are destroyed, that will be the trigger that starts the red armor coming south and the strikers going north. At the end of this video, I'll put in a the ground section, <coughs> excuse me, play of the mission accelerated in time to uh, to show you how it's all going to work okay so let's start building the mission first thing we want to do oh actually i want to talk a little bit here about the uh the farp <clears throat> i'm not going to show you how to build the farp uh, i'll leave a link to the video where we built this actual FARP if you're interested in how to build it. What we're concentrating on today is just this battle area up here. Okay, so the first unit or object that I put down is the Pody oil refinery. And to do that, you use the static uh, object menu, add or modify static object. And how I built this was just, it's just real simple, four, four little static objects that you individually put in. The, uh, the first one uh, under USA, under structures, is just a, they call it a tech combine. Tech combine. Okay, that, and that's what I put down there. Okay. And then I also, under the structures menu, there's a couple of storage, uh, chemical storage tanks. I put two of those down, and under the warehouse menu of the static objects, I put down one warehouse. Okay, the next thing I did is put in a group of special forces. I'll select those just so, to show you what I, ha what I have here. I just put in five of them. It's just five infantry. So you basically go into the ground menu and uh, under, you know, the category, well, you'd be USA and under the category will be infantry. And under infantry, I put in, I kind of mixed them up, M249 and M4s. And uh, you, you, like I said, I put five of them. Let's get rid of that. Just kind of scattered around um, on top of the roof of the uh, oil refinery and the warehouse. Okay, so that was the oil refinery area. Next, let's go up to 
north of uh, the river in this area here, I put down a mortar squad. And for the mortar squad, it's actually two groups. The first group is the actual mortars. And I named them the Pody Mortar Squad. They're Russian. There's three of them. And they are under the category of artillery. Under the subcategory, uh, let's just put it under Mortar 2B18. Okay? Like that. And as I said, there are three of them. And we're going to, let's see, go back to point one. And I may have gotten rid of my, nope, I didn't. Okay. <clears throat> For those three mortars, under the advanced waypoint menu down here, I added, you come down here and add for them to perform a task of fire at point. And when you do that, it comes up with a little triangle that you can pull around wherever you want those mortars to fire. Okay. And where I put it is down here, down south of Pody. There's an intersection here south of the uh, uh, oil refinery. You can see it says fire at point where they're going to be firing. And that we're simulating is pinning down this striker group that's a little further south so that they can't get up here to, uh, uh, to fire on the armor when it starts to come down. Okay. Now, also around to make it look, look a little more realistic, I put in another group of just straight Russian infantry. I uh, called them the Pody Mortar Squad Infantry, the Russian. I put in nine uh, infantry under the category infantry and just kind of mixed up which different kinds I wanted to put them. But I put them real close around each of the mortar batteries like they're manning the uh, actual mortars. And I also, the, the mortars themselves are very close together, probably only about 30 feet apart. And I did that on purpose, too, just to make it a little bit a more fun target to hit with CBUs and that kind of thing. Okay. For right now, that's all we're going to do with the um, mortars. I also put down a group of four armor pieces. Called them Red Pody Armor. They're Russian, four of them. Armor. The first one was a T72. I think the second one, the second and third one are APCs. One's a, uh, a BTR 80 and the other is a BMP3. And then the last vehicle in the group was a, another T72. Okay. Now for a route for these guys, because they're going to be moving eventually. I just took them down the road. Okay. Uh, let's see. On waypoint one, under the type, make sure you have on road selected. They're going to stay on the road the whole way. I put another point here where they uh, go into the green line incursion trigger zone, and we'll talk about that later. And they are basically going to stay on the road all the way until they get over here by the uh, oil refinery. And if they make it all the way over there, it's a mission failure. And I have a little trigger zone there that will that will trigger that if they make it that far. Okay, that's all I want to talk about those two units. Now for the strikers. I just put five units in. They're USA. The first one is an uh, a, uh, infantry command vehicle. The second one is a, uh, um, it's actually a Humvee a, uh, with a tow on top. The third one's a striker, uh, uh, anti-tank striker. And the, another anti-tank Humvee and another anti-tank striker okay and for their route 
I put in a few waypoints along the road and kept them along the road until they get up to point three. At point three, they'll actually start off into this field and go line abreast, okay? They're on the road, all the other points, but the last point, they're gonna go line abreast, basically in a line here to where they can fire on those that armor if, uh, if it comes across. Okay, we'll talk about the timing and the speeds and things like that. Uh, a little bit uh, a little bit later I just want to show you the objects that we're putting down right now I think that, that covers all those the the final object which is going to probably take me a little bit longer to talk about is the actual AFAC and I'm going to just put one another one down here or just to show you <clears throat> go into the aircraft menu under USA and the type will be up. I'm going to put a predator in MQ1 predator. Okay, so I'll put that down. Now, for the task, I want it to be an AFAC. I don't want it just to do straight reconnaissance. So I have to put that AFAC in, and that that gives it a task of FAC and and turns on its its navigation kind of system that it uses for its its the FAC script. Okay, skills veterans fine. Uh, you can name him whatever you want. I, I, I named it Predator JTAC, but whatever. Okay. Yep. Let's see. Edit. So now I'm going to go back up to the one I've already built and just talk through it. And the one thing I didn't say that I should have said is every one of the units we've put in, except for the static units, are late activation. And what that means is that we'll be activating them via a trigger and the reason you do that in a mission like this is if you don't late activate them uh, as soon as the mission starts they'll go on their merry way doing whatever uh, the AI has them doing and the battle will be over before you even get airborne okay so we're going to activate them by a trigger basically when when we contact the AFAC on his frequency that's when on all the uh, units are going to come alive and and do their thing but for the AFAC itself uh, for the route of flight <clears throat> I put in several points around the target area I went one two three four five six you can do it as an orbit if you want but the problem with an orbit is every time he he makes a turn you'll lose your uh, line of sight and lose your mark and another thing I want to explain about the AFAC um, is has to do with the uh, advanced waypoints. So let's go down into the advanced waypoints. I'm going to come over to point one. Um, I like to assign what group I want them to actually, in this case, lays for me. So let's... <clears throat> So what I do is add another advanced waypoint action. It's actually going to be this one, but I'm going to rebuild it. Add, and it's actually a task, not a command or an option. So under perform task, where it says fact assign group, that's the action. Okay. The group that I want it to assign is the Pody, Pody Mortar Squad, those three mortars, because we have to kill those in order for the rest of the mission to work. Weapon I don't care about because we're going to be carrying all different kinds of weapons. We're going to fly this thing over and over again. It'll be fun. The designation is where it gets a little sticky. But first, let me let me go down here. Uh, data link, make sure that's checked because that's what uh, gives you your um, automatic target handling system data link. Call sign, I, I called him Pontiac. You can call him whatever you want. And it's important to put him on the right frequency. He's going to be on 292. Okay. All right, but I'm going to delete that one because this one says the same thing. But what I want to show you, <clears throat> let's 
let's see, hit the edit again. Under the designation, I have him designating using a laser. If you get the drop down menu, notice that you could use Willy Pete, you could use auto, you could use laser, and you could use a Willy Pete, Willy Pete and a laser. Frankly, I don't think it's realistic to use Willy Pete. I don't believe predators can actually fire a Willy Pete, but maybe they can. Uh, but here, this in orange says the IR pointer, there's a problem because the distance is greater than three miles. Your JTAC or AFAC has to be within three miles of your uh, the point, the target that you want to designate in order to use an IR pointer. Well, for the laser on an AFAC, it's only five miles. Okay, so I'm going to show you here. If I take this point one, select it, and pull it down here south of the lake, and I think that's, let me check the ruler here real quick. That's about eh, six and a half miles. Okay. Now I'm going to go back into this point, back into the predator, back into point one, down in the advanced waypoint where we just were, edit, and now under the designation, notice it says laser. Problem distance greater than five miles. You won't get a mark, okay? If your AFAC goes outside of five miles anytime during its flight. So you gotta keep it within five miles if you want it to designate with a laser. And in our case, we, we, we do. So I'm gonna take this point. And I actually have to get out of here and bring it back to where it was about, I think it was right there. I look at it and we'll look at it again. See, there's no orange problem. The only problem is with the IR pointer, which we're not using. So we're designating with a laser. And, and, and I will mention, I, I think this is kind of a bug too. Under You can use Willy Pete laser and, and it'll give you a longer distance. I don't know what the distance is uh, to where it, it will. Uh, I just think it's more realistic to use a Predator AFAC with a laser. So I just use the laser, okay? And for the code, I'm just gonna leave it as to standard 1688. Okay, well, hopefully that wasn't too complicated for me to talk about on that. Okay. Now, Probably time for us to go into the triggers, and I'll just show you a, f a few of uh, the triggers that I've done. Maybe I should show you the trigger zones. Um, there were a whole bunch of trees here that were blocking the view of the armor coming south for the strikers, and for the, st the strikers didn't get a, couldn't get a clear shot on any of the armor either. So I removed those. That's what this zone is. And if you remember to put down a trigger zone. You come over here to create trigger zone, just put it down. Um, I'm gonna only make it like a thousand feet around and name it whatever you want to and then put it wherever you want uh, your trigger zone to be, okay? So I've got a trigger zone here it's called Pody Trees and I'll show you how we use that in just a second. I've got one here that's a mission fail zone that's only uh, it's only about 426 feet and it's a circular zone, okay? If the armor gets into that, the mission fails. The third and last trigger zone I have is this one up here that's called Green Line Incursion, okay? And let me pick that one. And actually, I'm gonna just build another zone up here because this, this has got a couple points I wanna talk about, okay? So let's go over to the create trigger zone. And I'm just gonna set it right here. New trigger zone one. But I don't want it a circle. I want it uh, what they call a quad point. That's pretty big. Now I wanna edit that quad point. So you have to come over here, hit edit. When you hit edit, you get these little uh, corner boxes that you can pull around and move your 
trigger zone into any whatever shape you want okay So if we wanted it to look something like that, that's what we'd do. Okay. Now we don't actually want that zone, so I'm going to delete that. Okay, so those are the three trigger zones, and I'll show you how we're going to use them in the triggers. So the triggers that we're using today are the green ones. These two are test triggers that I have in here, here in red. And uh, uh, if you want to stick around, I think this video is going to get long, So, but down toward the last of it, I'll show you. Uh, I'll run through how the mission should be working or how it looks. Um, on the mission start, or at the mission start, so the type of trigger, mission start, I just put a label in, remove Pody trees. There's no condition. And to remove trees, you use the action scenery remove object zone. And the zone was the one that I just put in that said Pody trees. And the only thing I want to remove are the trees. I don't want it to remove the bridge or anything like that, just the trees around that area. So trees only. Okay. So that's a way to remove the uh, trees. Okay. Now we're going to go down into the actual mission triggers. The first trigger. All it's, it is is uh, when we first get into the airplane, we need to contact Warhorse, and they need to give us a mission brief. So I like using um, the radio as in the airplane as much as possible to, to make things happen. I just think it's more realistic. So what I use is a condition called X colon cockpit parameter equal to if you come down all the way to the bottom of the uh, the menu here this one here x colon cockpit parameter or param equal to select that the parameter that we want to use you have to type this in exactly as uh, is as shown here hopefully it, that'll show up uh, big enough unfortunately I can't zoom it but it's basically all uppercase C O M M one underscore F R E Q com one underscore freak. That's what what the parameter name is. If you wanted to use the com two radio, it'd be com two underscore freak. Okay, so for the condition when we put com one at the value, the frequency of 291 you can put 0, 0.0 if you want but you don't have to of 291 then something's going to happen now another thing if any of you have been following my videos you know i like to use sounds uh mainly because i don't hear so well anymore but uh, the action uh to start a sound is called i, I like to use this called sound to coalition and it'll actually be the blue coalition i don't know why it said red blue coalition and then i hope i have a bunch of files in a you know that i i can point the uh dcs mission editor to that i use and in this case it's uh dragonfly warhorse dragonfly I'll copy. warhorse i'll copy all right so when we go to 291 that sound's going to come up, and, and then there's going to be the text message up in the right-hand corner. And it's a long one. Uh, I'll, I'll read it, what I put in. Dragonfly Warhorse, a UAV AFAC monitoring the green line, has spotted unusual activity a few miles north of the Pody Oil Refinery. Contact the Predator AFAC, call sign Pontiac, once airborne on frequency 292 for further updates. Loadout for troops and armor. And I'm leaving that up for 20 seconds with no start delay. Okay. That's all there is to the first trigger. And that trigger actually does nothing else. The meaty trigger is the second one. And this is when we contact, when we're airborne and contact the AFAC on uh, frequency 292, a bunch of stuff's going to happen. So I just called it Predator AFAC activation. I use the same type of condition 
x colon cockpit parameter equal to still going to be the com1 radio is what i'm using except this time instead of 291 it'll be 292 so the value uh the frequency that you put in is 292 and which is the afax frequency and when you do that you'll get a sound cue you'll get a message the message basically says dragonfly pontiac a striker quick reaction force is en route to the Pody oil refinery to counter enemy armor marshalling north of the area but they're currently pinned down in Pody by very accurate mortar fire stand by for nine line information to attack the enemy border, mortar battery and then i just put a little note in parentheses contact on dcs jtac menu basically the f9 menu in your dcs uh, com menu uh, you got to use that for the jtac that uh, that we're using okay and that'll be on for 20 seconds with no start delay Okay, now the, the, the meat of the trigger now is it's going to activate all those groups that we had that were late activated. So we go, I'll show you how we do one here. Okay, you go into the action, group activate, and it'll bring you a pull down menu with all your, your uh, groups. And the one that we wanted was uh, uh, the, the Predator JTAC. So we activate the Predator JTAC. You can clone that like five or six more times, however many times that is, and, uh, and just edit them if you want, or you can do each of them separate. But uh, so then we need to activate the Pody Mortar Squad, the Mortar Squad Infantry, the uh, Red Pody Armor, the uh, uh, Special Forces, and the striker QRF. Okay, now this flag on, I like to, when events happen, I like to, to put on flags uh, just in case I need to use them again, which I actually did when I was doing the test. So this last trigger here is just action, flag on, and the flag would be uh, 291. Okay, and that's all there is to that trigger. Okay, the next event that's going to happen. We've talked to the uh, AFAC. He's told us, hey, you need to kill those mortars. Well, once we kill those mortars, something's going to happen. And again, the label, I just put mortars, dead, armor, advances. The condition... A group has to be dead, group dead, and the group that has to be dead is those three mortar batteries, the Pody Mortar Squad, okay? Once you kill those three mortars, it turns on a flag. Actually, I put a wrong flag in here, didn't I? I said that should be 292. It'll turn on a flag, 291. So 291 is the uh, flag that says, hey, it, those mortars are dead. Uh, we'll get a sound cue, and the message will say to the Blue Coalition, message to Coalition, Dragonfly Pontiac, an enemy armor column is advancing towards the uh, Pody Refinery on the main north-south highway, two clicks north of the Rioni River Bridge. Looks like two T-72s and two APCs. Stand by for possible strike authorization if they penetrate the green line. So we're not going to be cleared to attack until they actually cross into the area that they're not supposed to be in. Okay. And that's going to be on for 20 seconds. And I actually put a 20 second start delay in there because right after you kill the, uh, the mortars, you don't want that popping up immediately. Give you a little bit of time to pull off your attack and start flying out. And then, then it'll pop up. 20 seconds after after you've destroyed those uh, mortars. Okay, I'm wondering if it's a good time to talk about speeds and things. I think it is. 
let's go back up to here to the uh, red Pody armor, the uh, two T-72s and the two APCs. Um, you know, I, I showed you the route that they were taking, but I didn't show you the speed. Um, basically, I'm, I'm, I'm letting these guys go as fast as they can, which max speed is around 32 uh, knots for them. So it's just straight ground speed. And when you do that, they will, let's see, point two here is where they go into the green zone. So that'll be about three minutes after you've destroyed those mortars. Okay. Which seemed, eh, that's okay time. And they get to the uh, base of the, the bridge in about three minutes and 40 seconds. So in about four minutes or so, they're passing through this, this was supposedly was supposed to be the kill zone for, uh, for the uh, strikers. Okay. Um, they'll get all the way to the oil refinery, the destination point, DP. It only takes them seven minutes and 31 seconds. Okay. Now for the timing on the strikers, <clears throat> I wanted them to get here at a specific time. Basically, uh, they've been delayed because of the mortar fire. So I figure th they need to get there after the armor. So when we fly the mission, you're actually going to have to kill or delay that armor long enough for uh, the bad boy strikers to get in place and uh, finish the job. Okay. All righty. So I f what worked well is if they get up to that last point, line abreast, at, in nine minutes. Now, how you can do that, I'll show you. If you look over here, it says fixed time and ground speed. If you tick the fixed time, those units will do whatever they can to try to get to that point in nine minutes. Now, so you gotta you gotta you gotta be realistic on your speeds. If you if you you know if you say well, you need to be there in two minutes and there's no way they can go that fast, they won't do it. So uh, you're gonna have to go back and look at your speeds. Like um, you can see here, the speed was about 16 knots. That's easily doable. Uh, all the way with 16 knots. So they're not going very fast, but they'll get there in nine minutes. But one of the glitches I wanted to show you about putting time in this box, I'm going to take this nine minutes out. Okay, so now it says zero, zero. Actually, says the speed's infinite, which you can't do. Okay, if you just look at this ETA and you just put, try to put nine in it, you see it says 60. Well, this this is kind of the glitch. You got to come over to right of the numbers, backspace, backspace, get back to zeros all the way across, and then you need to have your cursor on the right side of the zero, and then you can put your nine in. Why I do not know, but that's if you if you're having a problem getting the time in, try that. Okay, I think the only other advanced waypoint thing I wanted to talk to you about on the strikers was that when they get to point two, um, they're going to be going into a bunch of trees here. You know, it's still on a road. Uh, so I figured they were going to be stealth, start being stealthy and, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, being stealthy in their attack. Um, when I first tried this mission, I didn't have, um, well, let me tell you first, what I'm going to do is make them invisible from point two to point four. And that's what it's simulating is that they're being stealthy, that they're, you know, they're staying behind the trees, uh, you know, 
monitoring the area and basically setting an ambush. If you don't make them invisible, the T-72s are OP and they'll wipe out your striker force in geez, less than a minute. It was, it was amazing. I was really surprised that they made the, T, the T-72s that, more OP, that much more OP than the strikers, but they did. So for point two, if you come down here into the advanced waypoints, under edit, under perform command, the action will be invisible. Okay? And I did that at point two. Didn't do it at point one, did it at point two, three, and four. Okay. And I mean, if you want to get specific, you can actually have them targeting just the uh, armor too, but that's really the only targets that are coming down through here. So, okay, so that's all we've got on that, on speeds and and the timing for that. And let's go back into here into the uh, triggers. Okay. Okay. So the next event that will happen as the armor is coming down the road is they're going to cross into the green line. And the AFAC is going to tell us that. So that's a pretty easy trigger. I just named it Green Line Incursion. incursion. Uh, the condition is when um, you can use part of coalition or part of group, really, either one. Uh, the red coalition enters the zone Green Line Incursion. Now, and it's a part of a coalition. They actually have unit types. You can use ground, helicopters, airplanes, whatever. So you want ground. When it's a part of a group, it doesn't have that menu. Okay. So once they come into the green line or across the green line, we'll get a mess. We'll get a uh, cue, sound cue, and then we'll also get a message to coalition to the blue coalition, Dragonfly Pontiac. Red armor has violated the green line, cleared to engage. Just for 20 seconds, no start delay. So that lets you know, okay, you're you're cleared to, to uh, attack them. There, you know, and uh, since you built the mission, you kind of know where they're at right there coming down the road. And uh, you need to get over there and kill them before they make their way over to the oil refinery. Okay, now then I have a mission success and a mission fail trigger. For the mission success trigger, mission success, red armor stopped. And what I felt, the logic I, I used and the condition was that if you if you knock out a couple units of those ar that armor, basically if you knocked them down 50%, they're going to beat feet and head back north. So for the type of condition come down here under group alive less than and the group we're talking about is the red pody armor and if they're alive less than 50 percent so put 50 in there then this flag is going to come on flag on 505 you're going to get a sound and you're going to get a message to the coalition blue dragonfly pontiac Red armor is retreating. Good work. No further tasking. You basically won the mission. And I go a step further and come over into the defined mission goals. These last two are the mission goals for this mission. And the first mission goal is destroying those mortars. So the name of it, Pody Mortars Destroyed. And you score 50% if you uh, if you do that. The condition for that uh, to happen is the flat that 
flag 291 comes on when uh, you destroy those mortars. So if, if that flag's true, then you're 50% mission effective. And then the other 50%, Pody Red Armor stopped. So you score 50% if that flag that we just turned on, flag is true 505. Okay. All right. Last trigger. Appreciate you all sticking with me. I know this is tedious. Is a mission fail. And the mission fails if they capture the uh, Pody oil refinery. So the condition, I, I use part of group in zone, the red Pody armor. If part of them are in that mission fail zone, that trigger zone that we put down, then you get a sound, you get a message. Dragonfly Warhorse, enemy forces have captured the Pody oil refinery. Mission failed, return to base. And that'll be on for 20 seconds. Okay. And I believe we've covered everything in this uh, mission in the, uh, the target area. And as I said, I'm going to uh, stop the recording here and, and, and come back up in the mission and run through it. Uh, showing you what each of the units is doing actually in the mission. And so I'll be right back with you. So I've brought the mission up to the uh, mission briefing screen to give you an overview of uh, what's going on. And we're going to run a, an accelerated time to show you how all the ground units interact and what the triggers are doing. Secure the Pody uh, oil refinery. Intercepted enemy radio communications indicate Russian commanders are intending to use mercenaries to capture an important oil refinery just south of the Rioni River near Pody. A small contingent of U.S. Special Forces has been inserted into the area to keep the oil refinery secure. However, they're no match for the larger force, which includes two main battle tanks, two APCs, infantry, and mortars. Contact Warhorse, the Tactical Air Control Center on COM1 Channel 291 for mission updates prior to takeoff. So here we are in the airplane. First thing it said was to contact uh, Warhorse, so 291. And that'll bring up a message basically, basically telling us to get airborne and contact an AFAC to, to find out what's going on. Okay. Now, the, nothing really happens in the mission. This is our far pier. <clears throat> Let's get rid of the ruler here. Until we actually contact the AFAC. So right now, the only thing in the target area is going to be the static objects that we put down the uh, oil refinery. But when we go to contact the AFAC, which we can do on the ground in, in, in this uh, test method here, 292, incoming message. The AFAC tells us that there's a striker quick reaction force en route to Pody uh, to counter enemy armor marshaling north of the area, but they're currently pinned down by mortar fire, and we need to destroy the mortars. Okay. Now what that does on the F-10 map, <clears throat> back up here, went too far, there we go, is it activates all the, uh, the target groups and uh, the AFAC, you can see the AFAC's actually moving. The, the uh, mortar group, the ar red armor group, the striker force, and then the special forces at the actual oil refinery. Okay. But what I wanted to show you is this is the striker force. They're not moving. The 
this is the enemy armor the red armor it's not moving and as soon as you start the uh, or contact the AFAC the mortars are actually firing uh, towards the striker group and that's what's pinning them down okay now I've done a um, test trigger that I put into uh, the uh, menu to actually start the rest of the uh, mission because the next event is when the ex the uh, red mortars when we have destroyed them when we destroy the uh, red mortar group the the enemy armor will start heading for the oil refinery and the strikers will start coming north to intercept them So what I'm going to do here is explode those red mortars. And you should, they should blow. There they go. Now what that does, you can see that the T-72s, the red armor is starting to move down the road. And the strikers are starting to move up the road. Okay, and the timing will be a real important on when each of these incoming units get message. There. And then I, I just had a, uh, basically the AFAC tell us a message that the uh, Red Arm is moving south. And if they cross uh, the green line, which is a uh, demarcation line between the north, between the uh, red and uh, uh, blue forces, then we're clear to attack. Okay. Now, it only takes the red armor about four minutes to get to the bridge. It takes the strikers about nine minutes to get up to their um, firing position to where they can uh, attack the red armor. So for that reason, we have to, in our Harrier, delay this red armor or kill them, or they will take over the oil refinery. Okay, and I'll show you by accelerating using Control Z, accelerating about eight times how to do it. <clears throat> and you'll see the red armor come down here. And we'll show them. More fun to watch them, watch the tanks move. Because they're zipping right along right now. And red, it, we had a message there that red armor had violated the green line. They're actually firing at the oil refinery right now on the special forces. Okay. And of course it's taking, like I said, a lot longer for the strikers to get there, so the strikers haven't gotten there yet. And so in the timing when we don't do any delays at all, they're actually going to capture the oil refinery here. Dragonfly Warhorse, enemy forces have captured the Pody oil refinery. Come back to normal time here and show you that here's the uh, striker force plugging along. And they've still got a few minutes to actually get to their firing positions. Okay. Well, hopefully there were some techniques in there that you might find useful in your uh, mission building. And uh, I've flown this mission uh, th three times. I have videos uh, in, with different weapon loadouts that I've flown it. It's, it's uh, fun to fly with the different loadouts. I think once I flew it with iron bombs and CBUs, another time with snake eyes and uh, unguided rockets, and another time with... Uh, Mavericks and the laser guided rockets and every time it was a lot of fun. I'll leave links to those uh, videos in case you want to check those out. Well, I hope you liked it. If you did, please uh, hit that thumbs up and uh, appreciate anybody that subscribes and y'all take care. Dragonfly out.